what's good guys this is Mia and welcome to my beer tea or or sarctic yeah sure okay look we need the poo deck uh combo video so yeah before you start friendly reminder to like subscribe blah 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 anything that makes me happy because when i'm happy everyone's happy obviously that rhymed xd uh, yeah. anyways uh so yeah let's get into combo number one this deck is capable i don't want to say good at playing around nibiru but it can because the thing is your deck doesn't need its normal summon meaning that the invoked engine can definitely be utilized so up until now the one card that we used was just alistair so i don't really consider it a part of the combo but alistair is a one card that makes a negate that negates nibiru so something that you have to keep in mind all right so this is the actual combo if you have i guess just any level seven uh, Ursartic, Ur and then a level 8 Ursartic, and you have the Monster Reborn uh, for the Ursartics, or actually Monster Reborn, you can actually do a pretty nice setup, and I'm going to show it right now. So, yeah, you're going to pitch the level 8 to summon the level 7, or the other way around, it actually doesn't matter, but uh, summoning the level 7s is actually better when you're going first, and when you're going second, summoning the level 8s would make sense, because the level 7 is actually an advantage generator, while the level 8 is actually a board breaker or an interrupter for the opponent. So, for the level 7s, they're the non-tuners, and it's between adding a... Ursar take monster from your deck to your hand, recycling back an Ursar take from your grave to your hand, and special summon an Ursar take from your hand. And then for the level 8 tuners, they're all tuners, the level 8. The level 7 are all, all non-tuners. The level 8, it's banish one card from the opponent's graveyard, so DD Crow in a way. And then there is destroy a spell or trap on your opponent's field, MST. And then there's also a Book of Moon, literally. So, yeah, there's just cards that you already know basically so the effects aren't really complicated so yeah our now we're getting nibiru it doesn't really matter now we're literally making the frozen uh, winnie the pooh which activates a big diaper from the deck big the <laughs> yeah big you're gonna you're gonna hear me say that quite a lot anyways big diaper allows you to kind of cheat at the summoning condition of the assart ticket because like instead of tributing from your hand which is pretty neggy actually you can just banish from your from your graveyard so that kind of reminds me of another summoning mechanic i just forgot which one uh so you'll be using the effect to banish the level seven to bring back the level eight and eight plus one equals seven no i'm just kidding yeah it's eight minus one equals seven because it is um negative synchro summoning which isn't synchro summoned it's actually just a special summon and by the way i did mess up in my review on them my initial review actually said i think they kind of work the same way contact fusing does but it's actually not the same thing because it says must be special summoned and not must first be special summoned in other words they can never be revived so definitely do keep that in mind and this guy by the way is serpent oh my god my neck and my back no, actually, no, it's it's just my back this time. Anyway, Serp <laughs> Serpent Shrion is kind of like an Amor Factor Psycho or a Skill Drain, but only for monsters that do not have levels. So, in other words, Xyz and Link monsters are completely negated as long as Ursarctic Serpent Shrion is on the field. And on top of that, when your opponent special summons a monster, you can search your deck for any Ursarctic card from your deck to your hand and add it, uh, yeah, and add it to your hand. Duh. But yeah, it says Ursarctic card, not necessarily just Ursarctic monster. And the reason why that's cool is because you can bring the monster reborn that's from the grave or banished, which is nice because getting back your banished cards allows you to have a better grind game since this actually banishes your graveyard cards and also you can get the continuous trap which is like a clifford scout but for the graveyard instead of searching from your deck to your hand but anyways now you're going to see the interruption so every time our opponent special summons a monster our big diaper will get one counter so when we end our turn we already have like two counters on the big diaper it's technically big diaper but i don't care and uh, now we have three because our opponent special summon the first time if we hit seven we can permanent uh change of heart our opponent one of our opponent's monster so that's actually really really disgusting and now since our opponent special summoned we can also use the effect of ursartic serpent tree on to search our deck for an ursartic monster and now there is actually two paths that you can actually follow either the advantage generator or the um the, the interrupter for the opponent. So right now I'm just showing the advantage generator. So we're getting a Mikpola, which is the searcher from the deck to the hand by banishing something by using the condition of Big Dipper. And this is the boy that it's not, it doesn't even look like a bear, actually it does. It recycles back from the graveyard to her hand. Now our opponent is stupid enough to make another kind of, uh, by, by the way, by opponent, I mean me. 
because um, I don't, I can't really think of a lot of Salamangri decks that would play Ray and two Blue Eyes in their decks. Uh, anyways, uh, now we are going to get an additional counter on a Big Diaper. Uh, Kaina is just obviously not gonna do jack shit. Uh, nice deck, Kagari, XDLL, Shizuku, whatever. Okay, that was the seventh counter, so we can just permanently steal that Shizuku. Permanent. And the effect is not negated, and we can attack with it, so it's actually a crackdown on crack. Hey, pun definitely not intended. Anyways, <laughs> Jesus, uh, let's get into combo numero dos. I, I just want you to see how ridiculously easy the Salamangrid matchup is. So if you have literally just Mikpula and any two Ursarctic monsters, you can beat Salamangrid despite, like, regardless of what kind of hand they have. It's ridiculous. You know, Jaguar, Gazelle, Parallel Exceed, I don't even care, bro. Just draw whatever you want. I don't even care. You can't even jump over Serpent Tree on. It's actually really sad. Uh, well, I mean, you kind of can technically, but not really, actually. You definitely can't. Anyways, now we make Serpent Tree on pretty much the exact same way we did for combo number one. It's just that we don't have the insurance policy for the Nibiru because I decided to show this as a three card opening hand instead of four with either Alistair or another card that I'm going to show in combo number three, actually. Anyways, uh, now our opponent is actually going to uh, believe that he's actually in Happy Land by getting a lot of searches. We are also searching uh, from Serpent Shion to search into this me the Megatanus, which is the Book of Moon, by the way. It's a level 8, so that's why it's an interruption. And yeah, he's uh, getting more uh, Paralytic Seed, but I couldn't care less. Update Drammer for Transcode. We're like at 7 counters here, so the Transcode is something that we can actually steal. Technically, we can wait longer and steal another monster, but uh, I'm getting impatient, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, stealing that, and then Gazelle is going to trigger, uh, but we're just gonna Book of Moon him, so uh, yeah, nice graveyard. I couldn't care less, like I said, so you could have like Spinny with freaking Jaguar. I don't care, your Book of Moon, your Veilings won't search a field spell, you're not getting anything, your cards just don't, they don't have any value anymore, you know, imagine, because they can't play any Synchro or few, I mean, they can technically play a Fusion, Violet Chimera, but they, they can't play through a freaking Serpent Treon, so in a world where people don't Synchro Summon, don't Fusion Summon, and only Xyz and Link Summon, like against Zodiac and against Salamangrate, Ursarctic is shockingly overpowered. Like, I'm, I'm actually not joking when I say that. So, we need the Pooh FTK is a thing. Anyways, let's get into the third and final combo, which is also not the Ah, it's, it's, it looks like I lied. Okay, so, I won't be showing the other way to play around Nibiru, but I will be explaining it in my deck profile. Anyways, if we have Megatanus, no, sorry, actually, <laughs> once again, I lied. If you, no, no, actually, no, never mind, I didn't lie. If you have Megatanus with any level 8 or Sarctic, and then any level 7 or higher monster in your hand with the count continuous trap, Looks like a specific hand, but it's actually pretty not great, honestly, because I didn't include a hand where I had McPuller, uh, <laughs> McPuller, um, <laughs> what's the next, <laughs> McTainus, <laughs> their names are actually hilarious, it's really hard to, like, take them seriously, man, first of all, there's, they're bears, polar bears, so they have to be Canadian, uh, all they're missing is, like, maple syrup and stuff, anyways, you know, any, uh, just, I I'm talking too much, anyways, now I'm pitching the level 8 to revive, summon the level 7, which is the recycling back from the graveyard to the hand, and, yeah, Nibiru is more than a hand shop, it's also fuel fuel for your, uh, Ursarctic monsters, so now we make the adorable little guy right here, level 1 that activates big diaper, he should actually wait a, wait, wear a diaper, man, he's probably, like, one year old, Look, look at him, man. It's literally baby Winnie the Pooh. Anyways, uh, we can banish the level 7 to bring back the level 8 with its effect. It's actually a really good card. So if you were able to count the amount of summons, that was 1 plus 1 equals 2, right? And then 2 plus 1 equals 3. The third summon was uh, Polari. All right, so our three summons. And then the fourth one was Mega Pola. Uh, that's it, for summons. It's it's not uh, Nibiruable. So leave me alone, okay? Anyways, <laughs> now thanks that we have thanks to the fact that we have the continuous trap, we can actually cheat synchro summon during our opponent's turn, which is technically not a synchro summon. It's like special summon and Ursarctic by ignoring the summoning conditions. So we have two options: either the big, the big boy, the guy that's a serpent trion that just negates anything, or we can actually summon something else that wasn't really available to us on combo.
combo number one and two because we weren't actually drawing this card and this is actually Grand Chariot which for some reason really reminds me of Gladiator Beast and Dabate and it just has the artwork of a freaking Gladiator. L look at it man, I don't, I don't remember the last time I saw a freaking polar bear where like uh, just a gigantic sight like this, a freaking bow, I, I, I don't even know what this is. There's like one of them that actually just looks like he's skateboarding in the sky, wearing like a spacesuit. I don't know, they're probably all on crack or something. They, they don't even look like Beast Warriors and Beast. Bro, they should be machines. What the heck is going on, Konami? Like, bro, <laughs> this is insane. Anyways, <laughs> Grand Chariot, when he summoned, uh, he's uh, he's pretty much a Gladiator to Beast Gizaris or something. I think that's the one, the one that pops two cards on summon. Which is really good, by the way. And he also has another effect where whenever a card or effect is activated that targets an Ursartic cards, card or cards, you can pretty much tribute one monster from your hand or field, negate the activation. So uh, thanks to the fact that we have Big Diaper, instead of actually legitimately tributing a monster, we can also just banish a monster from our graveyard, an Ursartic. So that's exactly what I'll be showcasing. Technically, I'll be destroying my opponent's cards. I won't be destroying myself. I'm not that retarded. But the fact that I'm destroying myself is actually something that's interesting in a way because it actually also shows that you can destroy your own artifact scythe in case you play the Sanctum package. So... You know, definitely something to keep in mind. And this Continuous Trap is great, by the way, because it's not actually a hard once per turn, but a soft one. So if you draw multiple copies of the Continuous Trap, you can use pretty much all of their effects, like Recycle Back an Ursartic Monster from your Grave to Hand, uh, Quick Sync during your opponent's turn, whatever, well, Sync, you know what I'm saying. But anyways, that's... um. That's all I had to showcase, honestly, for this Ursartic combo video. If you guys have any comments or feedback, whatever, definitely don't let, me, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I will see you very, very soon for the deck profile testing video and more dueling book replays. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.